but we'll get right in. Okay. Well, Father, we thank you for this time together in the good word of God. It's the infallible truth on the earth today, and we're grateful that we can handle it, look at it, read it, hear it, absorb it, saturate in it, because it is the word that for, is forever the same, the same yesterday, today, and forever. No matter what's going on in our life, no matter what's going on in the world, your word is forever settled. It's the, it is the truth on the earth today, and we love it. We embrace it. We thank you so much for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we talked last week about the resurrection of Jesus and the importance of it, and I've been meditating on it all week because it really is a foundational truth, and I came across this scripture in Hebrews, and I thought, wow. It bears repeating in Hebrews 6. We're going to look at verses 1 and 2. He says, therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ. This is the foundational doctrines of Christ. It is like the foundation is the cement slab that keeps everything from shifting and keeps you very sturdy and steady. These are the, the elementary, like elementary school, kindergarten. If you don't know these, you don't have a good, strong foundation. He said, of the elementary principles of Christ. Number one, the foundation of repentance. Huge. Without repentance, you can't even get saved. Repentance from dead works, faith toward God. Faith toward God. Number two, the doctrines of baptisms, the laying on of hands, number four, and number five, the resurrection from the dead, and number six, eternal judgment. Foundational elementary principles and the resurrection of the dead is right in there with the elementary principles. It's so key to understand the importance of the resurrection of the dead. In my daily reading today, my one-year Bible, this came up. It's so amazing. I got to read it. Acts 1. It says, I wrote, about, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive, resurrected. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift that my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. And then it goes on and on. And then down in, this is Acts 1, down in verse um, 22, um, Peter says, therefore, it's necessary to choose one among the men who had been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us because Judas, they had to replace Judas, uh, beginning from John's Baptist baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. Doesn't say of his good works, of how he raised people from the dead, how he healed people. No, he must be a witness of his resurrection. Without the resurrection of Jesus, 1 Corinthians 15 says, For in this life only, if we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. But now Christ is risen from the dead. Even so, in Christ shall all be made alive. See, it's our hope. It's our eternal hope of what we're looking toward in the future, that we have died in Christ. All our sins have been 
uh, forgiven by the blood that was shed at the cross. See, without a crucifixion, there is no resurrection. So that crucifixion, we were dead, we're dead in Christ. We've been um, crucified in the Lord with him. And because of that, we will be resurrected with the Lord Jesus Christ as well. Amen. That's our hope. And that's what we believe. So it is the, one of the most foundational truths in our Christian walk. It's what we believe. And uh, Hebrews 6.1 is will tell us that it's an elementary doctrine. So we better get this. And see, it's not, it's important for you to believe the word of God, but, but understand why you believe the what you do and to be able to know it in your heart to teach other people. It's one thing knowing it for yourself, but do you believe it and know it enough that you can explain it to someone else? That's super important. So it's a foundational truth for us. Our salvation and justification before God is based upon our belief in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Romans 4, verses 24 and 25. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him, that raised up Jesus, our Lord, from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Classic Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved. There is that resurrection and the importance of it. So this is the basis of our future eternal hope. And remember, we're miserable if we just believe that, you know, in this life only we have Christ. But no, it goes on into eternity as well. Matthew 16, 21. Let's go there. Matthew 16, 21. And it says, From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. See, this was in fulfillment of all scripture. And I'm going to give you some of those as well. Um, he began to explain this, even though they didn't understand. It wasn't until Jesus was resurrected from the dead on the third day, that the illumination or the light that he was trying to show them then became known unto them. But he, let's turn to 1 Peter 1.3 and I'll give you another one. Lots of scriptures on this, by the way. 1 Peter 1.3, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a lively hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And many, many scriptures. Let, uh, let me give you a list of them that we're not going for uh, uh, time's sake. First Thessalonians 4, verse 13 and 14. You want to write these down. Romans 6, verses 3 to 5. John chapter 5, verse 25, 28, and 29. Lots of scriptures all through the book of Acts. So the message of the early church was really focused primarily in, uh, in faith of the resurrection. <clears throat> that is, the resurrection was so preached in the early church and the fact that Jesus could come back at any moment, any day, that they were willing to lay their lives down. They had such a revelation of the resurrection, not only Jesus' resurrection, but their resurrection, that they were willing to go into Colosseums, uh, be eaten by dogs and lions, go down into catacombs and live there, 
live out their days there away from, you know, the, the killing of the Jews because they so put their faith in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let's go to some of these. Acts chapter one. Flip to the book of Acts. And let's look at verse 21 and 22. Therefore, of these men who have accompanied us, which I'm going to tell you, uh, all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out, the beginning from the baptism of John, they proposed to, I'm going to just go real quick through this. They, um, they cast their lots and, and the lots fell on Matthew. But the reason why they casted it is they had to be a witness to the resurrection. Super important. Look at uh, Acts 2.24. Whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. Raised up, meaning resurrected. Look at Acts um, 2.29. Men and brethren, let us speak freely to you of, the, of David, that he is both dead and buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him, that of the first, the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. We're going to look at some of those in the Old Testament where he was spoken of as well. Look at three uh, Acts three fifteen, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are all witnesses. Um, chapter four, verse two, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus, the resurrection from the dead, or did they try to cover that up, you know, with a lie and that the, they came and they stole the body and they hid the body, um, which is preached among Israel to this day, by the way, to those whose eyes are blinded. But um, they preached the early Christians in Acts preached Jesus, the resurrected from the dead. Let's, let's look at 530. 530. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on the tree. Him, God is exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Let's look at 10 verses 39. It's all through Acts, the importance of the resurrection of the dead. Uh, 10, 39 and 40. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of, of the Jews and Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day and showing him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he rose again from the dead. Are you seeing the importance of this? Let's look at 17, Acts 17, two and three. This is what they preached in the early church, Acts 17, two and three. Then Paul, as his custom was, went into them and for three Sabbaths, reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead saying, this Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. Some were persuaded and, and, um, and joined Paul. This is what they preach. Look at 18, verses 23. 18, 23. And after he had spent some time, therefore, he departed and went over to the regions of, let's see, 23. 18, sorry. Um, 
to strengthen the disciples. Doesn't really say a whole lot there. Um, chapter 26. Let's go there. Keep on, keep it on. Sorry, my pages are sticking together. Uh, chapter 26, we're going to look at verses 6 through 8. And now I stand and I am judged by the hope of the promise made by God to our fathers. And to this promise, our 12 tribes, earnestly serving God night and day, hope to attain for this hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused by the Jews. Why should it be thought incredible by you that God raises the dead. God can do anything. Amen. So um, all through the book of Acts, all through the early church, they preached the resurrection, even more than the crucifixion. They preached the resurrection of the dead. This was their primary focus. And it is why they laid down their life. They overcame by the blood of the lamb, their testimony, and loving not their life to the death. The resurrection of Jesus Christ occurred in fulfillment of prophecy, and it was foretold in the Old Testament. Let's look back at Psalm 1610. It's all through the Bible. Psalm 1610. It is, pro, it is prophesied by David. In Psalm 1610, he says, For you will not leave, well, let, let's look at nine. Actually, 16, the whole thing is so good. But look, look at verse nine. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in shoal, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. David prophesied the resurrection of Jesus. Let's look at Psalm, or Isaiah 53. Isaiah was Jesus's favorite book in the Old Testament because it spoke of him so much through the whole book of Isaiah. But Isaiah 53, the whole chapter speaks of Jesus. The entire chapter. I would love for you to just spend time today to read the whole book of Psalms, Isaiah 53. It starts all about, look at it. He says, for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. He has no form of comeliness. And when we see him, there's no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected by man a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. We hid as if our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. The whole chapter speaks of the Lord, all about the sorrow. He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes, we are healed. Glory to God. He was oppressed, afflicted. He opened not his mouth as he was led as a lamb before his slaughter. He was taken from the prison and from judgment. Who will declare his generation? And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his, de at his death, because he had, no, had done no violence, nor there was any deceit in his mouth. Let it please the Lord to bruise him. When you made his soul an offering from sin, you shall see his, you shall see his seed. That's you and I, by the way. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. This is verse 11. We, he shall see the labor of his soul and shall be satisfied. The father saw the suffering of his son and he was satisfied by it. By his knowledge, my righteousness servant shall justify many and he shall bear their iniquities. He bore your and my iniquity. Glory to God. He was numbered with many transgressors and he bore the sins of many. 
This is such a, a foretelling in the Old Testament about the death, the crucifixion, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Another one in Psalms is Psalms 22, 21. And Jonah spoke about this in Jonah 1, verses 17, and chapter 2, verses 10. All foretold of the, of the uh, crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus in the Old Testament. Now, it was also foretold and prophesied, predicted by Jesus himself. Let's, let's turn to Matthew 16. He, he spoke about himself in the resurrection. Matthew 16, we're going to look at verse 21. 16, 21, and it says, From that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised on the third day. Those scriptures are all through. I, I know I repeated myself in that, but it bears repeating. Mark 8, 31 says the same thing. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things and be killed and be raised on the third day. Glory to God. John 10 Verse 17 and 18 says, I lay down my life that I might take it up again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. Amen. Mark 9, verse 10 and 31. Luke 9, verse 22. John chapter 2, verses 19 and 21 and 22, and the list goes on and on. Infallible truth of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's a solid elementary doctrine of our faith and what we believe. If we don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can't have but we can't believe in the resurrection that we will be resurrected from the dead as well. Foundational truth of our faith all through the Bible. Scripture supplies definite proof that he was bodily resurrected, not just spiritually, but bodily re resurrected. In John 2, verse 19 and 21, he spoke of the temple of his body. He said, destroy this temple and in three days, it will be raised again. He spoke of his body. Not obviously, not the temple in Jerusalem, which they, that's what they thought. But God, Jesus wasn't referring to that. Amen. In Matthew 28, 6, let's go there. Matthew 28, 6. And it says, Let's look at verse five first. The angel answered and said to the woman, don't be afraid for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he is risen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And as he said, come see the place where the Lord laid and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. This was an angel sent from the Father to proclaim the good news. Just as Jesus was born, the angels proclaimed the good news. The angels were sent from the Father to proclaim the resurrection of the dead. Let me give you more scriptures on this. Luke 24, verses 1 through 3. And 12. John 20, verses 1 through 9. And Mark 16, verses 2 to 6. Jesus 
is risen from the dead. Glory to God. You can put your faith in that. The word of God says so. Jesus appeared to many people after he rose again from the dead. In, in Acts 1, verse 3, it says, he showed himself alive after his crucifixion by infallible proofs. There it is. Let's turn back to the book of Acts. Acts 13. Acts 13 says in verse 30 and 31, but God raised him from the dead. Let's look at verse 29. Now, when they had fulfilled all that was written concerning him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in the tomb. See, every prophetic word about Jesus had to be fulfilled. And it was. But God raised him from the dead. He was seen for many days by those who came up with him from Galilee to, to Jerusalem, who are his witnesses to the people. And we declare to you glad tidings, that promise which was made to the fathers. God has fulfilled this for us, their children, in that he raised up Jesus, as it is also written in the second Psalm. You are my son, today I have begotten you. And that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption. He has spoken thus, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Therefore, he also says in another Psalm, you will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. For David, after he had served his own generation, by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his father, and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up saw no corruption. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sins, and by him everyone who believes is justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, least which has been spoken in the prophets comes upon you. So he is speaking and preaching the resurrection. Look at verse 47. I have set you as a light to the Gentiles that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. And the Gentiles heard this and they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. And the word of the Lord was, was beginning to spread throughout all of the region. Glory to God that Jesus gave us this window of the age of the Gentiles, which we are a part of. The light of salvation has come to whosoever, Jews and Gentiles alike, that whoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ and that God raised them from the dead shall be saved. Glory to God. Aren't you so glad you believe? Aren't you so glad that you are saved? Amen. So it's important. This is a foundational truth. Remember that it's so important that for 40 days, Jesus appeared to many, many people, infallible proof that he truly was raised from the dead. He ate with them. He showed Thomas the holes in his hands and his side, that he was not just spiritually raised from the dead and resurrected as the firstborn among many brethren, but bodily resurrected, because that's what's going to happen to us as well. Let me give you lots of scriptures on how he proved himself to many, many people that he was truly raised again, bodily and spiritually. He first was uh, known to Mary Magdalene in John 20, verse 14. 
and some we'll look at and some we will not, okay, for time's sake. Then he, then he went to other women, Matthew 28, 9. To Peter, specifically, Luke 24, verse 34. To other disciples, uh, Luke 24, 15. In the closed room to the 10 disciples, Luke 24, verses 36 to 43. And to the 11, this is John 20, verses 26 and 29. He appeared in the mountains to the 11. This is Matthew 28, verses 10 and 17. Remember all the times he appeared to them at the sea, to Peter, to Thomas, to Nathaniel. Um, this is John 21, 1 and verse 14. This is when he cooked the fish right there, made a campfire right on the shores. He appeared to 500 brethren at one time. This is the account in 1 Corinthians. Chapter 15, verse 6. He appeared to James and all the apostles in Acts 1, verses 1 through 4, which we've already read. And he appeared to Paul, Acts 9, verses 3 through 6. He talked with them. He ate with them. Luke 24, 30, John 21, 12, all through the books of Acts. He touched them. We know this in John 20, verse 17. He said to Mary, don't touch me. Don't embrace me. I have to first go to my father. Then I'll come back and I, I will walk with you. I'll talk with you. I'll eat with you. You can touch me then. Look at Thomas. In John 20, 27, he appeared in the upper room. He said, Thomas, touch me. I am he who was crucified. Put your hands in my holes of my hands and my feet. Infallible proof that Jesus Christ was crucified and rose again from the dead. This is the foundation of what we believe. Christ crucified, Christ rose again, and Christ's ascension into heaven, and now sits at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession for us against the accuser of the brethren, which is Satan himself. This is our Jesus. This is our Lord, our Savior, our King, our Master, our everything the foundational truths of what we believe, why we believe, and why the early church was willing to lay their life down for these very truths. It needs to be spoke about. It needs to be talked about among the Christian brethren of this 21st century with this kind of passion and, and revelation of why we believe what we believe. I mean, if a person came up to you in a grocery store and put a gun at your head and said, denounce that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, or I'm going to shoot your head. I'm going to shoot your head off. What would you do in that moment? See, that's what I'm talking about. The persecution of the church is coming. They're getting us ready by putting a little thermos, uh, thermometer on our head. They're getting us ready for that. These are the truths that we need to put our life, our stake, our life in. Do you believe it? Enough to lay your life down for it? I want you to ponder about these things. I want you to put them in your heart. I want you to look at these scriptures again for yourself in your own quiet time. 
and look at them and say, do I really believe this? Do I believe what, I mean, I believe it because I come to a good church that teaches it. I've read these scriptures my whole life, but do I believe them enough to lay my life down for them? And we need to talk about these kinds of things with this kind of passion and put ourselves right in with the first century believers because this is the, the Gentile age, even though it's 21 uh, centuries later, it doesn't matter. Do we believe the same thing that they believed? And are we willing to lay our life down for it? So that's what the Lord had for us today is the importance of this resurrection. And I think I'm gonna have one more part about it because I'd like to share what the resurrection gives us, the power that it gives us as born again believers. And I think we'll take up with that next week, the power of the resurrection. You can have the power to know and believe the truth. And you, you need that power of the Holy Spirit to believe the truth when you're faced with life or death situations. Uh, this resurrection power gives you the power to resist every temptation of the enemy. That's really important. It gives you the power to endure sufferings and hardships in this life. The resurrection power gives you the power to serve others when your flesh doesn't want to, to love others when your flesh doesn't want to. It gives you the power necessary to receive eternal life. We're going to go over a few of those in the power that the resurrection gives us and enables us to live this life right now in the flesh. So that'll be next week. And I, I hope by the time part one, two, and three, you will be saturated with not only the love of the resurrection, but and the truth of the resurrection, but understanding the power of the resurrection as a born again believer in the 21st century. Amen. I love you. I thank you for your, your faithfulness to come every Thursday morning. I pray that this word will saturate your life. The light of it will grab hold of you in such a way that um, the power of the resurrection, this elementary doctrine of the faith of a, of a born again believer becomes very, very strong and passionate within you. Amen. Father, I just thank you. I breathe that. I pray that on anyone who has ears to hear the importance, the value, the truth of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. I bless your day. And, and well, I was going to say week, but I'll see you Saturday night. <laughs> no, Saturday morning. Yes. Yes.